Here's how we can use a digital multimeter to do some basic testing on NPN and PNP bipolar junction transistors and JFETs. I only have an N-channel JFET, but I have an NPN and a PNP transistor here. From left to right, I have an NPN 2N3904, a PNP 2N3906, and an N-channel JFET 2N5457. Bipolar junction transistors are made from alternating layers of N and P type silicon. So this can actually be represented by two diodes. We have a PN junction from base to emitter and another one from base to collector where the base is a common terminal. So for NPN, the P side, the anode of the diode, would be connected to the base and then each cathode would be the N-type material for the emitter and collector and the opposite for PNP. The diodes face the other way with the cathode in common for the n-type. So if we want to test the NPN or PNP with a multimeter, we can check for shorts between any pins with a continuity test, but if it doesn't look shorted, we can also check if these PN junctions are intact by measuring for diode drops. So for NPN, if we put the positive lead on the anode or the base, and we put the negative lead on the cathode one at a time of emitter and collector, we should see a forward silicon voltage drop 0.6 or 0.7 or so volts. And if we then reverse the leads, we should see no conductivity because it's a reverse bias diode. And that will tell us the PN junctions are intact. And we'd reverse the leads to check PNP. So for this NPN transistor, from left to right, the pins are emitter, base, collector. So if I want to test the base emitter PN junction, I will put the positive probe on the base, which is an anode, and the negative probe on the emitter. And I see 0.663 volts, so there's a silicon diode drop. If I reverse the leads, I should not see a diode drop. So that's good. Now to check the PN junction base to collector. I'll put the positive again on the base and the negative on the collector. 0.645, another silicon diode drop. And in reverse, no continuity. So that's a good PN junction as well. We can use another characteristic of the BJT construction to actually determine now which of these are emitter and collector. The collector is physically larger material than the emitter and the emitter is more heavily doped than the collector. So the junction from base to emitter is going to end up with a slightly higher forward voltage than the PN junction from base to collector. So if we measure these two junctions again, whichever one has the highest forward voltage drop is going to be the emitter. So from base to one pin, 0.663 from base to the other pin, 0.645. So that's lower than this first pin. So that confirms the left pin is the emitter, the right pin is the collector, and the center is the base. Now if we look at this for the PNP, all we do is we reverse the leads. So the N-type material, the cathode, is going to be the base. So first I'll check the reverse bias condition here to make sure the diodes aren't shorted. So I've got positive on the base, or the cathode, and I'm going to put negative on emitter and negative on collector, and there is no continuity. So these diode junctions appear to be intact. Now to actually measure them, negative on the base, then positive on one of the terminals, 0.674 volts forward bias. The other terminal, 0.665 volts forward bias, which is lower than that first reading. So the pins on here go emitter, base, collector. Now that we know how to tell which pin is which on a BJT, what if we had one that we're not sure what the pinouts are, or even if it's NPN or PNP, and we don't even know from left to right which is base, emitter, collector, so let's just start probing pins and see what we come up with. So from the first pin to the middle pin, negative and positive, I get nothing showing. I'll keep negative on the first pin and now go to the last pin. I still have nothing. And now just move 
the negative to the middle pin and check the last pin with positive. Okay, so I have a diode drop, middle, negative, right, positive. So one of these has to be the base, and the other is either emitter or collector. So with this PN junction, with positive on the rightmost pin, we have already tested negative on the first pin and there was nothing. So that indicates that the center pin is most likely the base. So now, keeping the negative on the center, bring the positive to the left, and that's our other diode drop. So we know the base is in the middle, so on the right, 0.66, on the left, 0.67. That's greater, so the leftmost is emitter, the center is base, and the right is collector. And because the base has a negative probe to get a forward bias with either emitter or collector being positive, it's PNP. It's a 3906 PNP emitter base collector. For the JFET, there's one type of silicon going continuously from drain to source and another type of silicon on the gate. The way this is drawn here to represent the action of a JFET, we have two sections of P-type material that are both wired together as one common gate terminal. So this N-channel JFET has a P-type silicon gate and an N-type channel from drain to source, which gives us a single PN junction that we can test, but we can test it from gate to drain and from gate to source even though it's a continuous channel. The 2N5457 I'm using, from left to right, the pins are drain source gate. So first I'll check the PN junction between the gate and the source in reverse bias. So I should see an open circuit with a negative on the gate and a positive on the source, and it's open circuit. Same with the positive on the drain and the negative on the gate. Now if I forward bias, so I put the positive on the P-type gate and then the negative on the source and on the drain. There's a silicon diode drop and another silicon diode drop. So the PN junctions here look okay. And it's hard to tell the difference between source and drain when probing like this. Generally, those are considered interchangeable on a JFET. Another way that we can test the functionality, we can go into resistance mode and try to measure from drain to source. If this JFET is in good condition, we should be able to measure a maximum of a couple of hundred ohms resistance from drain to source when this FET channel is open. And the way the FET works, the channel is open when the voltage from gate to source is zero volts. And we can do this just by shorting gate to source while we are probing the resistance. So I can use one meter probe to short source and gate and use the other probe to measure drain. And I should have an open channel with a couple hundred ohms max resistance if everything's working well. So I'll put one probe on the drain, then the other probe simultaneously bridging source and gate. And I have 138 ohms. If I am not touching the gate, and I just try to measure resistance. It could be drifting all over the place. Right now we have eight or nine megs because the gate is just floating. So if we go back to shorting the gate to the source to open the channel, we have a solid 138 ohms. So this JFET seems to be in good operating order. I don't have a P channel JFET to test, but it would essentially be the opposite the channels open when gate to source voltage is zero volts and the gate is n-type silicon while the drain to source channel is p-type. So we would put the probes appropriately to check the PN diode drop here. So that's how we can use a digital multimeter to check if BJTs and JFETs are appearing to be in good working order and how we can even tell the exact pinouts of the BJT. This can especially be useful if for some reason the markings on your component are not really clear and you don't have a proper transistor tester that can tell you what it is and what the pins are. A good tool to have in the bag of tricks.